Yeah, can you see my presentation? Yes. It's all working? Yes. Perfect. Uh, yeah, first I'll start by thank you the invitation here to from Stian. Uh, I'm really happy to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about fish migration and um, uh, solutions for up and downstream uh, migration. And this is something that I've been working for some years and is one of my uh, main topics of research. Um, and uh, I also would like to apologize by holding this in English, but my Norwegian is very poor, so <laughs> it's more likely that you will not understand anything that I would say, so better just to keep it with English. So I would like to start my presentation by give like a little bit of a, a definition of what is migration, and we've been listening to migration and movement here during the, the presentations in the morning. And basically like migration is like uh, these movements that individuals they can do between uh, separate habitats uh, and they can occur in a regular periodicity and they involve they can involve a large proportion of the population. And this happened mainly because they try to exploit the different habitats either for breeding purpose or feeding uh, but also like to trying to get like better and more suitable conditions for their life stage. So it's all basically like a strategy for survival. But unfortunately, more and more these movements are hampered by different barriers or that make like the populations of fish to decline. And that's especially obvious in the past years where was like 76% of the fish between 1970 and 2016, they decreased, the population they did decrease that drastically. Um, and in particularly of freshwater fish, when you compare like with the marine and terrestrial migratory species. So what are the main causes of this decline? Basically, human intervention uh, by either overfishing, by water, uh, water pollution, uh, also changes in channel and morphology, and uh, also disruption of longitudinal connectivity. Uh, and this is usually what we think about when we think about um, problems and river fragmentation, although it's a little bit more complex, but here today we're going to focus a little bit on this aspect. And one of the examples is, for instance, the hydropower plants, the presence of hydropower plants and development of hydropower plants in, in rivers. Um, but barriers, they're not only hydropower plants and they're not only uh, anthropogenic from an anthropogenic nature, they can also be natural. And uh, we can find many of these barriers all over. And this is like an example of what's happening nowadays in uh, Europe. And unfortunately you cannot see Norway here, but these are the results from the AMBAR project where they try to identify all the barriers in different rivers um, in Europe and Scandinavia. Um, but there's no doubt that one of the major threats are the hydropower plants. And I'm going to focus a little bit my presentation on miti uh, mitigation measures for uh, related with fragmentation caused by hydropower plants. So what are the impacts of hydropower plants? We automatically think about amputation of fish, but there are many other um, consequences for fish passing for hydropower plants. We have um, consequences like related with uh, loss of scale of fish, for instance, uh, embly due to difference of pressure, bruises, uh, emerges, etc. So there's like, many consequences that can affect, or many, yeah, many consequences that can affect um, both the movement of the fish and, of course, their capacity to, to do their migrations in a safe and with a, without any delay way. So why is it important to restore the, the migrations? Well, it's not only important in an ecological perspective, but also because of political goals that increasing production of renewable energy. Also in ecological aspects that I mentioned, but like to trying to, to achieve the goals of the water bodies in the water framework directive, for instance, that aims to have a good quality 
of rivers and also a good quantity of number of uh, fish in rivers as well. And also because there are big plans for the construction of new hydropower plants. So we do have to ensure that fish can have these free movements. But one of the aspects that I would like to highlight here is like we need to focus our restoration not only, for instance, in salmonids or in one unique species, but in multi species. We have to look to the overall picture. And most of the rivers, they don't have only like salmon, for instance, but they also have like small cyprinids or eels or etc. And we, when we think about restoration and when we think about develop mitigation measures, we have to have that in consideration. So how can we reconnect this bidirection migratory pathways? And when I talk about bidirectional or also two ways, I'm talking about upstream and downstream. Um, in a presentation before, we, we heard a little bit about how to restore upstream migration, but it's also very important to think about downstream migration because it will not worse like to have or to come up with a very nice solution for upstream migration if we don't have the fish going downstream because many species they need to do these bidirectional movements for um, the survival so how can we do this we can do this by developing bidirectional mitigation solutions and to develop this uh, we need to think in the that we have to look in an interdisciplinary relation, uh, not only in terms of biology, not terms of ecology, but um, we also have to look a little bit more aspects related to the hydrology and hydraulics. And it's like this combination that will allow us to develop some uh, solutions that they can become uh, successful to allow fish passage. So for instance, in biology, we have to be very careful and we have to focus on the target species of that location. And we have to think about the biomechanic capacity of the fish, like how do they swim? How do they jump? Also in their morphometrics, because if I'm talking about a fish with large dimensions, it's very different than a fish with small dimensions. So I also have to think about that. We also have to look in terms of hydrology. We have to think of how are the variations in the system in terms of flow, for instance. And also all the hydraulics, like how are like the velocities, the accelerations, the turbulence in the system. So we, we have to combine all of this to come up with a, a good design that will be suitable for those target species. So I'll start now talking a little bit about upstream passage. Uh, we've been talking here in the morning about fishways. Um, and the fishway um, is basically a structure that uh, is created to facilitate the safe, safe and timely fish movement past an obstacle. A fishway can be also used for upstream or downstream, but the concept of fishway is usually connected to upstream uh, migration. So there are several types of fishways uh, and depending on their geometry, they are, they are classified by technical fishways, for instance, like the pull and weir fishways that we saw this morning, or the vertical slot fishways. We can also have natural like fishways that are fishways that they mimic the conditions, the natural conditions of the place. And we can have the special fishways that are, for instance, like lifts. And when do we use these uh, different fishways? We use it according to the location, the conditions, the target uh, species all, all the, the environmental connected. So for instance, uh, a vertical slot fishway, it's a good choice when we're thinking about multi-species pa passage or a natural like fishway, the same because it's even better because it's, it's mimicking the conditions that already exist there. So the fish are already used to it before the existence of that uh, obstacle. For instance, a, a lift, a special fishway, uh, would be a good solution if we're talking about big dams. So this is how we choose and how we have to think when we want to implement and to restore uh, a certain part of the river. So in terms of fishways in Norway, there are around 420 fishways, but most of them, they've been designed uh, 
more directly to salmon, meaning that the geometry and the conditions in, within the um, fishway, they are suitable mainly for salmon, meaning that they usually don't work so well for other species that you find in some of the inland rivers in Norway. Uh, these fishways, 25%, they are connected with hydropower dams. And uh, some of them, but they are con constructed in order to increase availability of river section for Atlantic salmon, and uh, also constructed in many uh, natural barriers, not so only in hydropower dams. So let me guide you a little bit on a case study. Um, that was developed at Nina together with the Norse by Junmuset and the Urish that they talked this morning. Uh, and um, I call it here as a hybrid trap because what we did was a little bit trying to use different concepts and different ideas and to um, retrofitting the existing fish pass. And the aim was basically because the fish way was working for salmonids, but not so much to the other inland species. So there was a need to change that. Uh, this work was connected to a, a big project called the Safe Pass that aimed to come up with mitigation solutions for eel and salmon for upstream and downstream migration. And this project uh, was uh, funded by the Research Council of Norway and uh, he was a leader by Terrain Forset from Nina. And the main idea here then, as I said, was like trying to see if we could change a, a very species selective fishway, a pool and weir type fishway, to a more uh, multi-species um, fishway, where it will allow the passage of more of the species that exist in the system. So how did we do that? Uh, basically, instead of having these uh, typical orifices and notches of a weird, pulling weird uh, fishway, we changed a little bit of the geometry of the, of the opening. We didn't do a complete like vertical slot where you have an opening for the surface to the bottom, but we did that in parts of the, of the slot there or of part of the, the area of the opening and the other part will close it but we had it like uh, adjustable, meaning that we could, we can vary the width and also the, the height of the opening. And then we can play a little bit with the um, variations in terms of, um, of flow and variations in terms of the hydraulic conditions that we want to create. We also introduce the, idea, the concept of a substrate in a, in a pool. Uh, inside of a, a pool in a pool type fishway. So we also add some stones at the bottom. And, and that's aim, that was for trying to create like different areas and that will help fish to use the hydrodynamics of the flow associated to those rocks and move forward. So this was basically what we got. As you can see here, we have like the opening is like adjustable. You can change the width and also, you can see the, the stones in the bottom. So what was the result of this retrofitting of this fish passage? It was very positive. We found out there was like a, a higher number of fish passage, uh, in particular of uh, whitefish. Uh, and we also observed the, the passage of new species like the burbot and pike. So, now let's look a little bit on downstream passage. So the main goal of downstream passage is to help fish to pass the obstacle and control their downstream movement in a safe way and with a minimum delay. And we have two ways of doing that by using blocking systems or guiding systems. So blocking systems are physical barriers like bar racks or louvers. And behavioral barriers are more like the ones that they use the behavior of the fish to block them, to, to stop their movement. And we can have like bubble curtains or light or electric fences. On the other way, fish guidance systems, they aim to guide fish to a certain location, to a certain place. And they can either be mechanical guidance systems or also behavioral guidance systems. So now, 
I'm going to guide you a little bit and show you a little bit of a case study where we try to develop a guiding system in the Mandal River. And the Mandal River is um, a river in the south of Norway uh, that's regulated by six um, hydropower plants. And here we, I'll show you the place of the uh, Laudel hydropower plant. Uh, see, yeah. So here you have the intake of the um, hydropower plant, and here you have the continuation of the river. And downstream at 500 meters of the intake, you will find like a small weird with a, with a fish passing centered. So ideal fish should come on this way and just move downstream and pa pass safely without entering the, the turbine. But that was not exactly what was happening and we were trying to come up with a solution. So what we did, we tagged some, um, some fish, some uh, salmon smolts and with the uh, acoustic tags and these dots here, the green, sorry, the green dots here, these are the locations of the hydrophones that we use to, to allow us to understand the, the position of the fish in a system. So we tag the fish and with that, we could have the movement of the fish in the system and try to understand where they're going, if they will end up in the intake or if they will continue their way straight downstream. We also did an hydraulic analysis and we characterized the flow. And with that, once that we could understand where the fish were going, we combined that uh, data with the hydraulic data. And we managed to come up with a model that could tell us how fish swim uh, and the, the relation with the hydraulics that they could, could feel. So meaning, by knowing the hydraulics and like velocity and uh, turbulence components and acceleration, we could understand if the fish were moving to the right, left, up, down, etc. And with that information, we try to develop a, a guiding system that will allow to guide fish to the other bank of the river, the opposite bank of the river where the intake was. So the main idea is like the fish will come into this area and they move downstream. For that, again, we did some studies with using com CFD, com computational fluid dynamics, uh, to analyze how the, the flow will be if, depending on the direction of the structure, size of the structure, or the geometry of the structure. Uh, and after that, we got to a, a solution and we are now implementing it or it's in construction and we now in the spring, we're going to do uh, the analysis again of the efficiency of this structure. Uh, and we're using, again, like um, biotelemetry to follow the, the roots of the fish and uh, we'll connect it again with a new hydraulics that is created due to the implementation of this structure. And that's all, thank you.